What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So you might have seen um, the building creation geometry nodes video that's been going around. So I was really excited to see that that file's now been made available for download so we can check it out and check out how to create buildings with geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this file is available to download both on the blender.org demo files page as well as on the author's Gumroad page. So I will link to both of those in the notes down below. Please, if you like what he's doing, consider um, consider at least making a donation when you download this uh, to support him for his great work. This is a really cool um, set of nodes, but uh, I wanted to kind of take a look at it. All right, so when you first open up the file, it's gonna look something like this, and it's gonna have these different buildings in here that you can click on in order to adjust. And this is kind of a cool page because it's got the nodes over here, as well as some notes and your viewport. Um, you could also just put this in a regular viewport as well. So if you just wanted to create like a general layout viewport, you could definitely do that. And so that can be a good one for kind of flying around these. And so what these do is they're basically adjustable based on the geometry node settings. So for example, if I click on this building right here, when I go into the modifiers, I can look at the geometry node settings and I can actually adjust them. So notice how, for example, I can come in here and I can adjust the building length, width, and height using these values right here. So this is totally adjustable. Um, and notice how it's automatically randomly placing things like AC units and um, balconies and other things like that. So you can also set things like number of top floors. So notice how the top floor windows are different than the lower floor windows. Um, you can also adjust the length of those modules as well. Notice how as you do that though, those modules start getting further and further away. So I wouldn't mess with those too much if I were you. But um, these are all kind of adjustable and changeable based on whatever it is that you wanna do. And so in addition, you can also click in here and you can select other options. So for example, let's say with this building right here, um, we wanted a different ground floor. We could click in here and instead of B1, ground floor, we could select a B2 ground floor. And so notice how when you do that, that's going to give you a different building type in here. Um, I will note though that the spacing on some of those is different, so you are going to have to adjust this. So it gets a little bit weird with your module length um, if you do that. Notice how if you do bring those together though, you can still create a building with that, but you just need to be aware of the gaps when you start moving the different parts and pieces around. And so one cool thing that I really like about this is if you duplicate a building, so if you do a shift D right here, you can come in here and you can totally edit that building. So there's not a lot of like messing around that you need to do or anything like that. You can totally duplicate a building and then just kind of randomize that and you can use that to create multiple buildings really quickly, just like this. And then there's also some options down below for the little extras. So for example, you can adjust the number of AC units. You can adjust the seed on those AC units, um, other things like that. Um, you, can adjust, you can adjust number of balconies in here as well. And so one thing I wanted to do, and I will tell you right now, I do not fully understand them, but I did want to take a look at the geometry nodes. And so if you look at these nodes, first off, this is a very impressive organization of nodes. It probably needs to be in order to uh, keep this manageable. But what you've got when you look at the nodes is you've got a bunch of inputs, right? And all of these inputs are being set based on your modifier. So for example, your length is going to have a value of five. Well, that value is then going to go into things like your different points, like your roof points, your window points, other things like that. And then you can actually tab into this to see what these are doing. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in here and I don't fully understand the way that all of this works. So it is placing things in here based on points um, and it's creating a grid somehow where it's placing these elements. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure how exactly these are working, but you can go through and you can take a look at this if you want to. So the other thing that's nice about this is it's also set up where it'll render out really nice. And so based on these settings, it's really easy to come in here and create your own custom scene. So for example, I could add a taller building over here. What I might do is I might jump into layout mode and just go to top down view. I can just duplicate this over here, then go back to this view as well. And again, you can adjust things like your length, your width and your height, and then you can render this out. 
So I could take this whole thing, then I could just do a quick image render, and it's gonna give you this awesome city scene without you having to do a whole lot of work. All right, so I'll link to some other videos about geometry nodes on this page. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this geometry node setup. If you've seen some other cool setups, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.